Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are Evan Stock and Adam Sines. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Uh, Evan and Adam, for those who get to see their names on marquees and stuff around, are both uh, musicians doing a show at the Ideal Theater coming up on the 20th of April. Adam, this is your this is your second appearance on KCCK. But yeah, I, it's always you, great to be back. You haven't been on the air since you were a guest DJ no, way back when in high school. It's exciting to be back here. It's uh, great to have you back. This is guest DJ season again. Yeah. It's, so we are, you know, we're, we've got the high school musicians coming in. And uh, Evan, you've been a huge part of our Blueza Palooza these yeah, last yeah. few years, yeah. helping out both on the kind of the tech end, and then mm-hmm. also your your band has closed the show the last couple yeah, of years. That's been exciting. It's just yeah. uh, it's been a riot. And uh, Adam, you've got a new band. I do, yeah. Um, Glass Leaf Company. We just started about a year ago, um, just about you know this week actually. Um, so we're excited to get into uh, our second year, second summer playing shows. Uh, the show is at the Ideal Theater, kind of a kind of newish venue yeah. for us. Uh, but Evan, you've been working on the tech end because mm-hmm. in addition to in addition to playing music, you also do a lot of front of house stuff. That's right. So tell me a little bit uh, for those who haven't been. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that venue. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I mean, you know, it's it's I get it's such a different vibe than a lot of the other bars or clubs around in town that do music. You know, it's very much live music oriented. Uh, you know, when you walk in there one of the first things you might notice is there's no TVs in the venue at all, you know, and then you'll, you're immediately, your attention is directed to the big stage and we got quite a big sound system. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a really cool spot to have this show. I mean, Chris Lager band, you know, they're great. Obviously they've been around, they have a solid fan base in this area. I think they're from like Omaha area. I mean, my band first opened for them, Oh heck! Ten years ago, at what was Mahoney's, what then was Dick's Tavern Shake Room, and now Moco. Uh, that's kind of the first time, you know. So it's a little bit different going in to play with them in a big venue like this, a bigger venue like this versus those little rooms. But I'm excited to uh, see how that goes. Um, and your your band is well a power trio, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, as I said, those who've been to Blues of Palooza mm-hmm. have uh, have have seen you in all your glory, and there it's always go. great fun. Yeah. But tell me a little bit about how you know about you know how you uh, centered on that as kind of where you wanted to go because it's uh, you know it's, I'm not going to say power trios are uncommon these yeah. days but the it's maybe an it's old also, school yeah, setup it you know? kind of is you know but you know when you're old like me you think well cream is kind of the original yes, and that, trio <laughs> that is that is our huge a huge inspiration for us you know was what's cream or for example early like black sabbath now there were four members but you know it still was one guitar one bass drums vocals you know that type of thing but uh i mean i went to when i was in high school uh steven and drake uh, Steven Langfels and Drake Wilson, the members in my band, we were buddies and, uh, we were just friends. They weren't musicians. I was a musician. I was playing with, uh, Chris Jensen at the time, a great drummer. I want a good, good friend of mine. He ended up moving out of, out of the city up to go to college up in U and I. So when things kind of split off, I found myself needing to put a band together. And long story short, I ended up just teaching Steven and Drake how to play from scratch from nothing. I mean, these are guys that never had a thought in their mind that they'd ever be musicians in their entire lives. And we started working on that. And granted, this is 14, 15 years ago. Um, but you know, that was always what we wanted to do. And that kind of gave me that opportunity when we started as a band, like I was writing the tunes, I was writing the riffs, I was booking the shows, you know, driving the van, you know, but they were just so eager to be a part of it and just do their jobs that it, it the power trio just kind of it just was perfect for what we're doing. You know, we, we've thought about, you know, adding some other textures along the way, but we just have so much fun with, with what we got going on, you know? Well, and you, you make plenty of sound. The three of you make plenty of sound. I would, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam, you've, uh, as, as I said, you did, uh, you were in jazz band in high school. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, that was when I first met you when you were part of the Kennedy jazz band. Uh, but at the time, and I still remember this, that you and you came on to be a guest DJ and I, you know, we talked about music, of course. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you know, what, you know, what else do you intend to do? He says, and you said, well, I want to be a chef. And oh, yeah. now you are one of the proprietors of Up and Smoke Barbecue, the one of our hot yes. new barbecue places. That's right. So first off, congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Uh, before we talk about music, tell me, you know, 
spend just a minute talking about uh, about getting a catering and restaurant business going. Well, uh, we've been open for just about a year as well. They both started around the same time, so it's been a lot to juggle at once, but um, they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, you know, I get to do a lot of things in the kitchen that I, you know, love to do. It's kind of a, a means to an ends, but also, you know, it's I couldn't live without it. Um, but it's when I when we first started opening, it's obviously my dad and I. So we worked together a lot, and um, uh, you know, father and son spending a lot of time together. Obviously, you know that can get a little they're, they're, a little I, testy. You, but you're, uh, tell, you're telling me there is sometimes a little friction, perhaps. Oh, oh, it's smooth <laughs> as butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, we, uh, you know. We stick, stuck with it and uh, kept rolling, and it's been pretty good. We keep adding on and adding on. We got our first live patio show this Friday, actually, um, yes. on the uh, uh, what was it, the 14th with Craig Erickson. So um, we'll be excited for that and looking to get into our next summer and get some more things going. Excellent. Okay. Well, now let's talk about Glass Leaf Company. Mm-hmm. Now, I've, now, I've heard your EP. Uh, and uh, really, really, really dig it. But tell me about how that band came together. Well, um, it was, uh, I, I was sitting at, you know, Bricks downtown having a drink and uh, John, our guitar player, came up and he said, uh, you know, what's your name? You just came up to meet me and had, you know, have a chat. And he said, well, I'm just, you know, I'm looking for a, a piano player for this band I'm in and I'm have, having some trouble. So, you know, any piano players? And I said, well. Yeah, I, I do actually. <laughs> um, so I, we uh, we got down in Robbie, our uh, bass player's uh, basement, and just started jamming for a while. Slowly started bringing more people together. Robbie's brother Matthew um, just started playing guitar, maybe about two three years ago, um, and really started getting getting into it with us. And so it's it's been fun, you know, learning how to you know, play with these guys and play in a small group like that. Now, when I listen to your music, and I think I may have, I think I even said this to you in email. I don't know. I don't know if it landed properly or not, but I would, I would call it Beatlesque. Yeah, that is to say, you know, I mean, I mean, it's you know, it's I'm we're not kidding. It's you know, it's it's got a it's got an edge. Oh yeah, definitely got an edge to it. But that's what I hear. Well, I mean, I'll tell the, you is what, that an influence. I when I look out in our basement and I see all the Beatles records posted along the the wall, I, I think I hear it too. You know, <laughs> so it's they. There's definitely a lot of different influences. The the two bl- brothers love their Beatles. Um, I come from a, a Grateful Dead family I was about, myself. I was about to say like that Grateful Dead vibes in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah my, my middle name is Jerome after Jerry Garcia. Okay. So, you, know, it's, <laughs> you love to see all the different things come from you know all the different influences everybody has. Yeah. Uh, Evan, same question. You mentioned you know you mentioned uh, Black Sabbath, but you know who who what are your other influences? You think? Well, I mean, when we were growing up, we were listening to. You know, when I say we, it's me and the boys, me and Steven and Drake. We were listening to Steppenwolf, you know, Sabbath, like I mentioned, Zeppelin. I mean, we were listening to the Grateful Dead as well, like the Beatles, obviously. We're old school stuff, you know. I, I liked, I really liked, like when I was cutting my teeth at that age, I was listening to a lot of underground stuff like Leafhound, Iron Claw, Granicus, uh, Captain Beyond, if you're familiar. Captain Beyond, they're awesome. Some just like stuff that, you know, I wasn't on the radio by any means. This was kind of at that time where I was able to go on and download music off the internet, I guess. And I kind of just went and looked for it in that regard. But, you know, and Hendrix, obviously, you know, getting into hearing what Hendrix was doing was really something that I always just wanted to, like, feel what it felt like to bring that kind of voltage to a stage. And that's, we just love doing it. We're just rolling with it. I mean, heck, we just played a show uh, at Wildwood this last Friday, Saturday, one of those days. And, you know, our set ranged, it was all original material of ours, and the music ranged from 10 years old to five years to music we wrote last year. You know, so we're still just, we're just holding on to stuff that we've created even in the beginning when we started and just kind of rolling it along. Um, Your... uh your day gig, as it were, mm-hmm. is you're kind of the, you're the rock band coordinator for the Eastern Iowa Arts Academy. That's right. So you're running how many student bands? Eight, eight yeah. youth rock bands. Yeah, we got about fifty to sixty kids, and uh, it, that is seriously one of the coolest things. I mean, I love, I love music can bring so many different experiences to someone's life, and it, it, they're all valuable. And this one I think is really special because I've been able to be close to the generation before you know that are coming up that are going to be the future of our 
local scenes and beyond i would assume there's a lot of talented individuals a lot of talented kids in this program uh, well we had one of the bands at uh, blues palooza yeah. and uh, have, we've had some of the members do some of our programs so mm-hmm. so we're familiar they're obviously getting a good grounding in yeah. yours yeah. how does it feel to be the old man you know i love it actually well here's what's funny i'm still like shorter than most of the kids so like i'm just like hairier and long haired running around i mean i it's awesome i mean these kids at first it was interesting because you know we didn't have like a like a connection yet they didn't know who i was you know i was kind of just coming in as the new guy and i was eager to help but as the gigs have gone by and the years have ticked by like we've really gotten to understand each other i mean it's really cool to work with all these kids i mean they're really talented you know and just obviously like you said you've seen him play a few times as well and it's just awesome well in addition to uh, evan stock and uh, adam sign's busy career as musicians you also have big day jobs too yes, yeah. uh running the rock program and uh, of course we don't even want to think about how many hours you're putting in every <laughs> week adam right back after this yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, Adam was a little late because he had potatoes, potatoes cooking. cooking yeah, yeah. Had, to, had to watch. <laughs> well, them, well so, you yeah. can't you can't stop in the middle of that. Can't skip yeah. a beat. No, no. Well, I, yeah, when I when I was at the Ideal Theater for a show a few weeks ago, I saw your you know your upcoming show on the twentieth with Chris Lager, and I thought, oh, I've been wanting to get. You two, you know, not necessarily together, but I thought I've been wanting to get both of you in here. I thought, well, this would be perfect. We'll yeah. come in. We'll talk talk about your bands, talk mm-hmm. about this uh, upcoming event because mm-hmm. it's, uh, uh, you know, we just have such a rich musical uh, environment. And, yeah. you know, it's a little bit of everything, jazz, blues, and rock. And you all encompass all of that, you know, yeah. all of it, too, Yeah, in, in all of your music. So, again, the show is the 20th of April. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, the Evan Stock Band and Glass Leaf Company and the Chris Lager Band out of yeah. Omaha, who, again, have been here uh, quite a few yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, what Do you know the Ideal Theater's uh, what uh, is it? Facebook or website? I can't remember how you book. I, they I have bought a Facebook. T- um, I bought tickets, tickets, but I can't from. remember how I did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've got. I think they've. Yeah, they've got a Facebook with the links on it. And then, like, if you haven't gone down to check out the Ideal in person, you should because it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I a mean, great their space. front their front space is super nice, and they have a nice big display in the front window that all have uh, uh, QR codes, so you can walk right by. Put your phone right up on the poster, and you could be buying your ticket right there. You know, so that's pretty handy. And like you said, not a TV in the place. Nope, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Visit the Ideal Theater on Facebook to uh, get tickets, or uh, just find out about uh, other upcoming shows. And thanks so much for coming in, and uh, good luck with it. Right, thanks Thank you very much. much. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1030 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org culture or your favorite podcast player. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.